with Lean Frontiers. Um, I am actually at skill point right now. So I am going to mute myself and hop off the camera. And then Oscar and our guests will take over for the day. And Oscar, it's on to you. You're going to stay there, Skylar. You'll be in the background, won't you, in case something goes technically wrong? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, good on you. Thanks for your help. As always, thanks to Lean Frontiers and Skylar in particular. As I said to these guys from Church and Dwight, um, Skylar's the the, um, the the hands and the legs behind whatever we do these webinars. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce you to three people from Church and Dwight. We've got Anthony Burns, John Moores, and James Fright. Uh, James is, they're all CI leads at their respective plants. James is in Folkestone in the UK, and John is in York, Pennsylvania. Tony's in Vancouver. So this is going to uh, follow this structure. Tony's going to give us a little bit of background on uh, Cartacom, Cartacom, and who CND is shortly. And then each of the three, uh, I've got a couple of questions I'm going to ask them, and then we'll let you know uh, when the next webinar is, and that'll tie us up. We'll be no more than uh, 25 minutes. So Tony, first up, uh, who's Church and Dwight? And what do Church and Dwight do, please? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, when I uh, mention to folks locally here in Washington and around uh, my travels that I work for Church and Dwight, typically the first question I get back, Oscar, is what church do you work for? The Church of Christ? <laughs> I said, no, Church and Dwight. It's the surname of Austin Church and John Dwight. Um, so Church and Dwight is probably better known. Um, you could probably see the company logo on my ball cap the Arm & Hammer. So people say, oh, you work for Arm & Hammer. No, Arm & Hammer is the flagship product that started Church & Dwight a little over 100 years ago. Um, I would say Church & Dwight is a small company in a big market segment. You know, we're a consumer packaging goods company, but we pride ourselves on being blue collar. Anyone who walked through any of the 11 manufacturings and a handful of distribution centers around the uh, domestically around the country and internationally, you'll be hard pressed to find a shirt and tie at Church and Dwight. You know, we we get in the get on the floor and get in the weeds with our uh, employees and get stuff done. Um, as I said, there's about a dozen sites, a little over between distribution centers, manufacturing sites. We use a couple of co-manufacturers, but we're not a big company. We're only about five thousand people, Oscar. But we make big brands, brands that everyone recognizes, starting with the Arm & Hammer, you know, the flagship product. But people don't realize Church & White uh, manufactures Trojan condoms, First Response, the Pregnancy Kit, Nair, Spin Brush, OxyClean, Orogel. My site is for, responsible for Vitifusion and the vitamin industry, along with John's. Uh, Batiste, which is a, a hair product that's really popular in the EU. Uh, all kinds of laundry detergents and uh, dental care. And then we're always looking to acquire uh, companies, privately held companies that are up and coming in their business segment. We only buy number one, number two, and we want to make sure they're uh, you know, strong in their segment and the segment's growing. So Church and Dwight is constantly growing, usually adding a uh, power brand, uh, one per year, or one every other year. So that's who Church and Dwight is. I think you said to me, Tony, when I was in, being introduced to Church and Dwight, that they aim to have a product in every aisle of the supermarket. I, that's an informal vision, if you like, and that sort of made sense to me. And now I know a little bit about what you do. It sort of adds up or is adding up as time goes on. So the yeah. second question was the rationale behind Cartacom 2022. And Brad Martin has, has said, has asked, uh, who was one of the attendees, put in a question. He wants to know the development of Cartacom, specifically how Carter was presented and were they previously, were they, that being the 27, were they previously introduced to Carter? So a little bit so, about Cartacom and then that question, please. Yeah, so I'll, uh, this is a full circle uh, answer. Um, yes. First of all, Cartacom started when the director of, supply chain and operational excellence matt king was out here visiting the site we have our own internal uh, continuous improvement lean manufacturing standards and we travel from site to site uh both grading and rating people's best practices um 
And at the end of his trip, he stayed an extra day and met with the local Washington CI team. And I asked him the question, quite frank. I said, Matt, you know, what do you see next for Washington? And he had mentioned Kata and if I had any experience with it. And I said, well, actually, I do have a little experience with Kata. Our local uh, MEP program here in Washington brought in a consultant and tried rolling Kata out and it didn't stick. And it's nothing to do with the Kata methodology itself. It was a consultant just the approach wasn't very good, and so it left a bad taste in my mouth. So when Matt said, uh, you should take a second swing at Kata, I was really concerned because, you know, I'm getting a kind of a direction from a director on something that I'm not passionate about. So I did a little bit of homework, and I couldn't find anything that really appealed to me. There's a lot of online Kata education programs, but I'm a face-to-face -face person. I like to... Uh, shake hands and read body language and just get my hands involved in my learnings. And so, uh, you know, after exploring all these avenues, I reached out to Scott Curtis and I already have a relationship with the TWI Institute. And he said that they've got a world-class CADA program and, you know, I trust Scott and Scott's judgment. And so that's how we got CADA rolling. And so the whole program coming out of COVID is, you know, we want to see our colleagues again. Again, we're a face-to-face -face blue collar company. Um, we like the techn technological stuff, but we also like just being in the same room with each other. So, you know, I worked with uh, Scott, worked with you and came up with this program to teach 30 learners from across the church at White Sites and some of our friends from Gala Wines. And then I just built, I built a program around the flagship, which was gonna be the Kata program. So, you know, we brought other stuff in, some, Community of Best Practices and the TWI JI program, um, with Kata still being a flagship. The other thing we looked for, though, was you know uh, uh, the networking aspect of it. You know, I know my colleagues from uh, internet calls and video calls, but this was the first time since COVID that we all got to get get back in the same site together. So it was huge. Um, it was a, it was a busy week, Tony, and I really it was appreciate a busy it. Week. <clears throat> for the for the 30 people who attended and you can see James and John nodding uh it was very intense so the th there was three groups doing the five by two hour Carter program during the week so each group had a session a day and then they were doing uh JI as well alongside and a number of other things as well but in between time they had to do preparation the program uh, is very hands-on and there was practice required. So it was an intense week. I really admired what you put together. And then you put the social side in the evenings, which was terrific. But it was very, very refreshing for me to get back face to face in front of you guys. And um, and I could see it was for the participants as well. So yeah, well well done. And it was, uh, a, you really didn't know where, you were sticking your neck out. You didn't know where you were heading, but um, it didn't get cut off. So good job. I'll give sure. Tony a bit of a break, um, then we'll go around the room, if you like, so to speak. So, John, if you wouldn't mind going first, the first question is, so during, you presumably had little background, I can't, not, I can't remember, uh, maybe you want to talk briefly what you knew about Carter, but really at what stage during the week did you think, oh, you know, this stuff that Oscar's going on about, I'm going to give this a crack? And what was the trigger? Yep. So um, my background with Kata was, was pretty light. We had run a program that I have, have mentioned on a number of our CI community calls called Winning Teams. It's actually uh, presented by a gentleman named Jeff Kapenitz, uh, who is with our local operational excellence uh, partner, Mantec. Um, so we've, we've used the Kata methodology practice through that program. That's kind of how we, we drive the improvement teams in that program. So I had had that exposure to it. So I was open to it coming in, was um, really looking forward to the content as taught through the 10 hour course. But I would say um, you, you hooked me when you, you mentioned that we might use Kata to drive the individual pillars or standards of our own lean programs at our sites. And that kind of uh, okay. threw a spark in my mind that, yeah, I think I, I think I could get pretty interested in using this and I may have taken a few more notes in, in the next hour or so. 
So it wasn't so it wasn't so much. So it was when I when we talked about it's not another thing to do, it's the way that you think while you're doing what you already do. Right. The way the way we do our work. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. Spot on. Thank you for that. So the second question, John, was we talked a lot about the week and during the week about what you're going to do when you get back to your plant to get going. Because uh, the week, in some senses, I kept stressing, it's an intense week, but it was relatively easy uh, in the sense that it, the real stuff starts when you get back. So what did you actually, what have you done since? That was yep. two or three, three weeks ago, I think it was. Yep. So I'm, I'm personally a big believer in train and do and that we learn by doing. So I was, um, you know, happy for the encouragement to come back and give it a go, as you say. Um, so we had a team that was already uh, in place around one of our liquid laundry detergent lines. We have, we have five uh, liquid laundry detergent packaging lines here at our site. And one of the lines was uh, struggling with poor performance in terms of OEE. And, um, you know, we had already assembled an improvement team around around that line, uh, consisting of some support resources here at the site. So, so really my first go was to kind of pitch to the team leaders, the idea of, um, you know, embedding the improvement efforts that are already happening on that line uh, with the Kata practice as the structure around that. So that's, that's what I have done in the first couple of weeks since uh, being back is introduce the concept of Kata generally speaking to that team, see if they're open and receptive to it, and then uh, really plug in and be a member of that improvement team using the Kata uh, practice. Excellent. Thanks, John. So just, um, I may have failed to say it at the start, everybody who's uh, attending, but this is a first in a series. You would have read that when you registered. This is an introduction one, first in a series. So the following one, which um, I'll emphasize the date at the end, of the, is uh, you know you'll hear John talk about what he's learned and what went well and what didn't go so well while he focuses on that liquid laundry detergent OEE exercise. So thanks, John. Thanks for that summary. James, same question to you. At what point during that week, uh, three weeks ago, did you think mm, this stuff, Carter, might just be worth a try? Uh, yeah. So so I have zero experience with with Kata. Um, I did karate as a kid. Um, so I'd heard the word before and I wondered what on earth this was going to do with with lean and with a, a manufacturing plant. Um, I hadn't read all of Tony's introductory emails very well as well. So I hadn't done my homework. So I was, I was com a complete rookie when I sat in the room um, and started learning. But I, actually, to be fair, I got hooked really quite quickly um, and mostly because my management style is more of a coaching style than than directing traffic and and telling ah, people what okay. to do um i i like to empower and give authority to to the, the guys on the floor to make improvements in their own areas and, and make decisions in their own areas because they're the guys who really know what's going on not not me i make an assumption but but they know the facts and, and the data um so quite early on when we started learning about the coaching kata um I got hooked you know the simple questions of what's your target condition what's the actual condition and what obstacles are in your way for me that was that falls right in line with my my methodology of, of managing and leading anyway so it didn't take much convincing for me um, and as we went throughout the week and we 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 did the the practice sessions with our with our different teams um I could just I could picture it working in our plant in our plant mm -hmm. I'm sure like a lot of plants across the world our training tuition isn't isn't the best and i can see how this can fall right in line with all the other things we, we we're doing to to fall in line with with john's point it's and in fact i asked a question in the class i said how on earth am i going to do this cata thing alongside all the other things i have to do as well uh, and you know you pulled us in line oscar and said it's not an extra job it's how you do what you're already doing so I, I was um, I was on board and 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 aligned with Kata quite early because it aligns with my style. Yeah, I could see that. I could pick that um, in your questions, which was great. So the second part, as it was with John, um, we talked a lot during the week about that being an easy week, relatively. And the real test is go back to your plants and have a crack at this yourself and see what you learn. So um, what have you been able to do? 
well, since you've been back, and it's very early days, I know. Yes, yeah, so so, so I, I fell into the the trap that, that lots of things, lots of people do on on training courses, and I loved our training courses, and then I fell into the rat race as soon as we came back, um, dealing with all the things we think are really important then. Um, but we have introduced this to our plant manager. Um, we've got a new plant manager, and we've we've aligned him, or, or got him up to speed with what CATA is, what we've learned, and and what we might want to do. Um, I'm not completely clear on uh, how we roll this out yet, but you know your words of advice, Oscar, would do something small and and show the the credibility of CATA. So we have a capacity issue on one of our aerosol lines. We make Batiste, which which Tony was talking about. Um, and whilst it's early days, we haven't yet figured exactly what we're going to do. We have a line that we're going to use CATA on the aerosol lines to do something small and and use CATA to to really prove its its worth. But the immediate thing we have done is is use that coaching CATA style in our boardwalks. So we oh, do okay. boardwalks throughout the day. Um, so it's, it's, it's not the, the experimental cater piece, but the coaching yeah. cater piece. We're, we're consciously turning our boardwalks from a directing traffic event where you, you hear about what's going on and you tell people what to do. Um, and you become a bottleneck by taking too many actions um, to, a, to a coaching cater style where we, we have the operators on the line tell us what their obstacles are and what they're going to do by the time we we come around in a few hours time so that that coaching cat has actually been quite useful and, and we're finding that we're, we're getting more done and training the shop floor on how to do some of those actions um, so it's been really quite useful already <clears throat> i think that's really important i think what i heard you say then that you're turning those boardwalks well you're moving those boardwalks from rather than directing traffic to more how are they thinking yes and yes. and the other thing i i'm interested to know is did you tell them you were going to do this beforehand or have you just done it just just done it good just good, done good, it. good so we just we're going to no fanfare no carry on let's just alter our tone a little bit and let's see what happens that's your approach yeah, yeah and, and, really and, like and that that's tone. something we've done already and, and it's been it's been really useful um, and I hope when, as we move on with the CATA program, uh, that, don't get me wrong, this boardwalk coaching style isn't using the, the questions exactly right. No, 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 no. But, no, uh, no, but I hope that as we as we do CATA, that sort of what those questions are asking won't be completely alien either then. Good. So just so, again, those who uh, joined us and those listening to the recording understand, every two weeks or so I'm meeting with these three people, these three guys through Teams. And they're uh, each stage where um, they're, you know, based on liquid laundry detergent for John and James. And James, I appreciate your honesty on the fact that you got bogged down when you got back the first week. James's focus, and you'll hear from Tony shortly what he's doing. Um, we're going to meet every two weeks and they're going to uh, let me know what they've done. And there'll be some coaching there and then they're going to agree on their next step. And uh, so your uh, each webinar is going to build on um, what they're doing and what their learning is. So James, thanks very much. And again, appreciate your honesty about saying, you know, back to reality and and what actually happened there and you get bogged down. It's hard to uh, keep that head above water with, after you've done a, an intense week like we did. So thanks. Tony, lucky last. So at what point during the week did you think this stuff that Oscar's on about might be worth a try and what was the trigger? Well, like uh, James, I was sold right out of the gate sometime Monday morning. You know, I still have my booklet right here, Oscar. And amazingly, I think I've got more of my own uh, notes in here that, by word count than what's actually in the booklet. That's good. I couldn't get That's enough of it. Yeah. But I think right around day three of the training, we start talking about target condition and i don't know if you said it or if it was quoted out of the book but you know the target condition gives us permission to not fix it all at once and that made sense to me because uh, i am so discouraged that was a when... mark rosenthal quote by the way for those listening it was yeah. a mark rosenthal i get discouraged quote. i get discouraged when we try and fix a, a complex process holistically instead of trying to fix uh, a little piece at a time so when when you said that I, you know i just like 
small incremental steps are so much easier to sustain than trying to go for the big holistic repair at once. And so that was really my aha moment. Okay, good. And less, less uh, daunting to the mind, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. And then we talked about, again, as I said to the others, about <clears throat> this week's the, you know, follow the pattern, follow the pattern week, follow the book week. Next week, you're on your own. Uh, we need to do this to continue to really learn something. So what have you been able to uh, attack or what, what, what have you, what path have you gone down, Tony? I went down two paths. Uh, the first one was, you know, as we were wrapping up the instructional week, I was already uh, planning my next move. And I have a consultant coming in at the end of the month and we are going to do this. Uh, we we're calling it a Kaizen. It is really more of about a problem solving, creating a tool. And I tried to force this Kaizen into the Kata methodology and it was getting big. It was getting clum- clumsy. And um, I felt like I was getting upside down. And, you know, and I shared a little bit with you on this. And then my plant manager just happened to stroll by and he says, uh, and, the, and the, the timing was perfect because he's like, oh, do I got a challenge for you. I said, why don't you tell me your challenge condition? <laughs> and he did. And he gave me this huge challenge condition. And uh, I, it felt natural, right? You know, I know what, I know what his vision is. You know, I played catch ball with him a little bit, got a couple of clarifying uh, statements out of him, but it was a beautiful challenge condition. And it, um, the subject matter experts on the floor, I have a good rapport with them. And so, um, you know, we took off and we're in the second week of uh, improving this process, which will both make it safer, more efficient, and it put it in the hands of some subject matter experts instead of uh, some entry level labor stuff. So um, I'm in the thick of a whole cot improvement process right now. Good. And as you know, Tony, I was a bit nervous about the size of the first thing you were on about. Yeah. <clears throat> and the Kaizen event. So I was really pleased that you've narrowed it down to something because it, as I said, to the these guys and everyone in the room and you know, when you you want to the first thing is you've got to become comfortable with scientifically thinking yourself so if you pick something too big it becomes too hard so we narrow it down so 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 the so these guys can learn to think scientifically um, and and uh, do that in a, a small field relatively and then that allows them to develop that skill and take it onto a bigger field which is what i encourage all three of them to do and everyone in the group John, I'm just going to throw it back to you. Last week in our mentoring, you we were talking about your challenge, and you know you said you uh, um, you acted on the feeling that currently the challenge might be too achievable. You had a danger sign. Can you just talk, you know, for one minute about that? Yep. So I mentioned my project was on this one particular liquid laundry detergent line, and the team was already up and going. Um, on the project and had already actually done some observations of our changeover process. And so um, the observations and times that the team had already taken in terms of collecting some data and making some observations, you know, allowed them to think that, you know, they could take a changeover that was slotted for an hour and a half on our planning schedule and cut that in half down to 45 minutes already. And they, and you know, we were thinking that that might be our challenge uh, statement. And really it just felt like if, if they already felt like they had a path forward and a way to get there, then that's just a go do. It's not really a challenge at that point. Yeah, perfect. I love the way you said that. It's just a go do. If, then, if, if the people aren't feeling, oh, if there's not a bit of pushback, oh, we don't know how to do that. And there's a bit of pushback then it's not really a challenge is the point so you picked up on that really well so well done uh so these guys uh as i said there's going to be mentoring i'm mentoring these guys over the next uh 12 months or so and um through the webinars i've told them that they are to be honest uh and when we have these sessions and they are to tell what when it goes well and they're to tell what doesn't go so well and what they learned from what and how they adjusted from that. So please join us. Typical things they'll be answering. I know a number of you have submitted questions. 
like Imelda wants to know how they overcome resistance of change. Susan Mitchell has talked about how do we maintain enthusiasm over the months. Uh, Keith Jones, how do things differ from each plant's expectations and what surprises do they encounter? The various perspectives and or roadblocks from different sites uh, comes from Scott Couple. And another one which I thought was interesting was uh, interested in engaging the younger generations in this type of thing from Joanne Romero. So that's the sort of thing you're going to hear these guys talk about. Uh, our next webinar is on November the 30th. So please, as we jump off this, jump on the Lean Frontiers website and register for that webinar. Guys, um, James, enjoy your dinner. And Anthony, you're about lunchtime. And John, you're towards the end of the day. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Lean Frontiers. Thank you, Skylar. And uh, please register for the next one. And you'll see these guys then and hear what's really happened in their world as they apply what they learn and learn from what they apply. Thank you to everybody who joined in today. A reminder, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. Thank you all again for participating. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.